I think what we've established is we've got a great tournament ahead of us. Karen Prieto is holding the ball, and we are moments away from getting things started. Number 23, South Florida, against the vaunted Connecticut Huskies. arrangement before we toss the ball up. Well, UConn's traveled really well. South Florida's got its fan contingents as well. There at the Atlantis Resort, Paige Becker's three seconds in. She's missed. Battle for the rebound, so crucial in this game, it falls for South Florida. Good job by South Florida boxing out and just staying persistent on the glass. They're going to need their guards to rebound as well as their bigs. They've got their hands full with UConn today. Shaneka on the ball. Scored in double figures in 36 of her 51 college games. We're going to see a lot of different looks from USF. Coach Jose Fernandez has a ton of different looks to expose different things. We're going to see great offense from the Bulls. Betty Madunga misses her opening shot of the game. See the whole USF bench put their hands up when Williams caught the ball for the first time. She pulls the three, misses, just her third miss of the tournament. She scored 31 points with two missed field goals yesterday. That's two missed threes so far by UConn. South Florida doing a good job getting out and contesting. Beckers drops it inside, and it's an easy bucket for Nelson Adoto. You know, with UConn, you really have to pick your poison because if you run them off the three-point line, they've got so much fire in, in firepower inside to be able to finish. Sometimes you have to choose as a coach. UConn looking to put some pressure on USF. That's going to be difficult. The Bulls have the top two assists per game players in all of the AAC from last season. Well, they play so well together. They look for each other. They're not selfish. They share the basketball. And I think that's just a sign of a really well-coached, unselfish team. If they miss the shot, that's something they do a little bit too often. Adota drops it to the side. Nelson Adota, what a pass, and it's a foul. The sixth foul that Kristen Williams has drawn in this tournament, just the start of the second game. Yeah, and we saw that all day yesterday, her getting backdoor cuts. And again, South Florida's out denying, right, trying to be there on the catch. You have to pick the poison with UConn. They're such a good passing team. That's something that Coach Oriema stresses. He calls himself a pass-first guy. Um, and you can see the way they move the ball is just, it's just so beautiful to watch. Well, there was a stretch during the first game for UConn against Minnesota where they hit about three back doors in a row. Williams hits both the free throws, and it's a quick 4-0 to UConn. This is what USF's trying to avoid, that early UConn run. Exactly. And U UConn is notorious for coming out of the gate strong and then making you play catch-up the rest of the game. A big shot for Harvey. She's missed it. Becker's got a hand to it. Now it's a quick break. Westbrook. Good organization and transition defense by South Florida there just to get back and avoid giving up a layup. Edwards gets deep position, holds her footing, missed the shot, battle for the rebound with Manunga, and it's kick free to Leverett. Great fight. Great fight right there by the USF just to secure that rebound. I tell you, Aaliyah Edwards is one of my favorite players to watch. She just does the dirty work, gets on the glass, finishes inside. That's a turnover if you're South Florida. You don't want turnovers, but you can live with a dead ball turnover because you have an opportunity to get your defense set. When t speaking with Coach Fernandez, he talked about capitalizing on opportunities. If you're going to turn the ball over, at least you haven't given up something on the other end. But they have to value possessions and get as many good looks as they possibly can. Westbrook. Yeah, that was just a simple play. UConn exposing the size advantage that their guards have and looking to I mean, Westbrook to post up the smaller Sydney Harvey. The coach, Jose Fernandez of USF, he's been here before. He knows that Gino Oriam is going to try and get his team out of the gate early, aggressively, and it's 6 nothing. They used to play together in, in the AAC all the time, so he's calling the timeout very early. Yeah, and, and that's a good, smart call by, by Coach Fernandez, as you see. A nice cut there by Nelson Adoto, but UConn getting the ball inside and finishing over the smaller players of South Florida. The thing about UConn is, on average, they're about three inches taller than every South Florida player at every position. So these both these teams are very well coached and balanced, but the size advantage inside 
for UConn, you see them taking advantage there. Well, it's not just the size, it's the, it's the talent and size that UConn is able to bring because USF was matching up against Syracuse, which was also a taller team than USF, but the Bulls, it just didn't matter. They out-rebounded uh, the Orange by a significant margin. Well, they were just more balanced, I thought, but 6'5 six, is 6'5 six, and 6'3 is 6'3. You know, if the one thing from a rebounding perspective, if you're, if you are as a teammate, are the post player responsible for boxing those two bigs out, then your guards have to come in and secure the rebound and actually get the ball. Back to your point about stopping UConn's runs. You can't let UConn get ahead of steam. And I think this is a really smart timeout by coach just to get his team set and make sure that they get a good look on the other end. The issue for USF in this case is that you're going up against a team you can't really miss a lot of shots against, and that's been the Achilles heel for South Florida. Despite the fact they've started 3-1 and one and they're a top 25 team, they're only shooting 37% from the field as a squad. Yes, but it's early in the season, and South Florida is challenging themselves with their non-conference schedule. They just came from Tennessee. They played Syracuse yesterday. They're facing UConn today. They're staying in the Bahamas Ooh. to play Stanford after this tournament is over. So for Coach, he knows he has to load his schedule on the front end. He has somewhat of an experienced group to be able to handle it, but they're being thrown in the fire from the start. They've won three of the first four, but didn't account for Olivia Nelson Ododa's long arms in that cross court pass. 13 to shoot already for the Bulls. Chineka needs this one and has it. And just a really smart call by Coach out of the timeout, running UConn off of a series of stagger screens to get his go to player a clean look. Looking for Beckers on the back cut. Edwards pulls it out. Westbrook left it way short. Pinzan got a little bit lucky there because she went under the handoff and gave Westbrook a wide open look. So UConn just has so many different ways they can score. The USF really tightened the screws defensively in the last three quarters against Syracuse. But UConn's looking to do the same in the press, forces the turnover. What a pass up for Kristen Williams. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised to see UConn in a press, this one, two, two, three quarter court press. I haven't seen that a lot from them. And these two coaches know each other so well, it's interesting to see UConn come out in that look. They split it this time for an open look to Chineka, and she hits the three. Really great answer by South Florida, just getting the ball to the middle of the press and having options either side. Chineka just knows how to put the ball in the basket, and that can be a problem if you leave her open on the back end of a press. Well, if you're South Florida, it, it was interesting. Beckers misses again, set a slow start to this battle for Atlantis. It was interesting in warm-ups because UConn is so vocal and so chatty, and the South Florida side was a little quieter. So when you have a player like, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at what's happening. It <laughs> lost my train of thought. <laughs> but when you have a player like Janek come out and kind of hit some shots, it gives your team some confidence. And Son turns it over. Oh, she might have won it back. She did. Tipped it to Sydney Harvey. Great hustle. Almost ended up in our lap. And Janek. Tough turnover, though. Could have high fived her on the way into the table. Yeah. But she was, after she collected that ball out of play, just trying to get her teammates to calm down. Exactly. The energy is high early on. Beckers. There it is. Well, that little fade screen, if you're South Florida and you both go with the cutter, it leaves the screener wide open and Paige Beck, it leaves Paige Beckers wide open. And that is usually a problem. The player of the year nationally from last season, she dropped a career-high 34 in the season opener. Wasn't as explosive in terms of scoring in the opening game of this tournament. Sydney Harvey can stroke a three, and there it is. USF is keeping itself alive behind the arc. That's a silly mistake, too, by UConn to wow. create another possession by South Florida just stepping in early. It was Avina Westbrook trying to inbound the ball. USF putting on no real pressure, and the Bulls down 6 nothing early have hit three threes, two from Chineka. She's got another shot. And she has her own rebound. Great hustle. Shot clock issue. 
Caught initially by Ashley Gloss, the official on the baseline, and now we're send Karen Prieto to the scorer's table. You know, you mentioned Paige Beckers earlier, um, not being as explosive from a scoring standpoint yesterday. Paige Beckers is so talented, she can get hers whenever she wants. And I think for UConn, finding that balance for their offense. They have so many weapons and they're so explosive, but for Paige, being able to get her teammates involved while also being oh. able to score. Pass by Chineka to Monoka for tied at 11. Now, Becker's only had eight points. I say, you know, only. She's still not turned the ball over all season, which is probably the most remarkable stat you'll see. Baseline drive for Paige Beckers, and she's getting hers. She can – it's – the game is so – for her to be a sophomore and for the game to be as slowed down as it is for her, meaning as players get older, the game comes easier and they don't have to think. Paige just plays, and she, I'm telling you, she can score whenever she wants to. Not only doing that, now 75 minutes without a turnover to start this season for Paige Beckers. Goes along with the 13 assists. Shineka going at Beckers, tries to slip the pass to Panunga, but it was a bit too early for her. Yeah, I think she just tried to force that one a little bit. She had Harvey spotted up. Maybe make the skip pass opposite. You get your teammate a wide open look. I think she fell in love with that move after it worked the first time. Sometimes pre-planning can be a problem. Only sometimes. Nelson Matoda <laughs> working with Beckers. The hesitation draws the foul and rims out the and one. Well, she came to play today. She's being really aggressive. They say she only had eight points in the opener. Well, they won by 30, UConn, against Minnesota. So she didn't need to go out and get herself a lot of points. She might need to score a little more today. You know, I think Paige is one of those players, you see her attacking the basket here and coming back with her right hand floating left. Just the, the touch that she had. She was frustrated that didn't drop, but I think for her, like I said, finding the balance of getting your other teammates involved. You know, Gino spoke yesterday in the press conference after the game that if he has three players getting 20 and they win the game, that's what they care about. They care about winning the game, whatever that takes. And this is only their third game of the year. Uh, some of the other teams here have played a number of games before coming to this tournament. And Son for three. And she hits her first three points of the tournament. Seeing all these threes go through the rim is really giving South Florida a little bit more bounce to their step defensively. Offensive foul on Kristen Williams. Just a really heads up smart play there by Harvey. We saw that from her yesterday, moving her feet, keeping her hands off the drive, taking a charge. Really, really tough play. I think Harvey drew two in their first game against Syracuse, and she was hunting those charges. Now, Pinson, even though she didn't score a point in the last game, the, the point guard for USF had nine assists. She has 20 assists this year. And she was much more patient there against that three-quarter court press to get her get her team into their offense. And Song bobbing and weaving. I'm Two sure to shoot. She sees the shot clock. Chineka got it off and got the rebound. This is what USF does. They average more than double what UConn does in offensive rebounds per game. And that's a double-edged sword because that could mean you're missing shots. <laughs> a little right? bit of both. Right? <laughs> But for USF today to be able to control pace and tempo and have the ball in their hands, that means UConn isn't running out and scoring. And the shot clock has gone off this time, and Pinson can't hit the rim again. Looked like USF didn't know how much time it had left. They didn't, but the longer you have the ball in your hands, the less opportunities UConn has to score. I suppose that's true. We got time of possession in basketball. Alvarez to check in for Chineka. She is a three-point specialist for USF, and that is where the Bulls have made the hay so far. They have one two-point basket. And we get our first look at AZ Fudd as well. The number one overall recruit in the incoming class. She was trying to cut towards the basket, but it's Olivia Nelson Odota that draws the foul driving to her left. 
UConn is a, is a team that plays the game of basketball and doesn't necessarily run plays. So the action you saw on the backside with that fade screen, they're making, they're setting a screen and making a read. They're not going to a spot. And that's what makes them so difficult to defend. Nelson Adota turned the ball over. Sydney Harvey read the pass. Well, it was a great double team post to post from South Florida and their bigs got some help from Harvey to step in and get that, get that steal. Harvey pulls it back. The battle for the rebound is always going to be a tough one. Beckers brings it down, gets it up quickly to Kristen Williams, looking to attack Pinson, but she missed. Interesting that she went to her right hand there. She's naturally a left-handed player, so to cross over and go the other way, might have just been able to take the left-handed layup. Coach Fernandez calling out the play to Pinson, the junior from Italy. Tipped by Paige Beckers. My goodness, her defense was on display against Minnesota. It's on display again today. Yeah, it's interesting because I had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to go to a few UConn practices, and Coach Ariema was all over Paige about defending and being able to get in to help and get out and close out. And she's just so naturally athletic. She's still learning angles, and she's still learning timing, but she just has unbelievable instincts for the ball. You can't necessarily teach that. About five steals in two games. Pensan's going to get a breather. They'll bring in the other point guard, USF, Ariel Wilson. They transfer from Memphis. They need to get the ball in. Alvarez, with four seconds already gone, is able to squeeze it. Ten on the shot clock for USF. Chineka against Paige Beckers. Fonka Minjiadu, that's not the shot you want if you're USF. No, but it was a good read off of their horns look, and both UConn players went and took the post player dive into the basket, so you can live with that. One second difference between shot clock and game clock. UConn will be looking to take the last shot of this first quarter. Watch for a high ball screen here. They're getting into their stuff. Becker's seven seconds. It's fun, and she hits the three. She needed that to go in. There's so much been written about AZ Fudd and the expectations are so high on her. She hasn't necessarily put the points up yet, but to hit your first shot, really, really important for her. Uh, AZ Fudd had five points against Minnesota. She's the preseason Big East Player of the Year. And she gets the three to end it, but Williams has put in a couple of baskets as well for UConn, who leads by four as we head to the second quarter. 18, USF 14, familiar foes and familiar coaches going after each other once again, even though UConn's not still in the AAC. Uh, Danny, they, they have a great familiarity with one another. They do, and we had the opportunity to learn a little bit more about that coming into this event. Coach Ariam is saying, I know Jose Fernandez very well. We have a great relationship. He does as good a job as anybody for preparing his team to play. He said they're one of the more difficult teams to guard offensively, and guys, you'll love this. He said, Jose Fernandez has more plays than Broadway, Zeeland. <laughs> More, play, uh, more plays in Broadway than Shakespeare, and he, he found it. After the first quarter, USF was down five to Syracuse and ended up winning the game by 24, Alex. Well, they just made some really great adjustments against Syracuse, but what's working for them right now, all those stagger screens to get their shooters wide open looks, they're four for six from three. That really helps considering they've turned the ball over five times. Of course, Coach, uh, Coach Oriema is one of the few coaches that Fernandez will run into that they've been coaching longer than he has. Coach Fernandez going into his 22nd season. Gino Oriema going into his 37th year. He won his 1,120th game to start this tournament. Coach Fernandez won his 395th. Well, Coach Oriema, in my opinion, one, the greatest of all time, if not one of the greatest of all times. The dynasty that he has built at UConn is unprecedented. And they're just continue to manufacture great players and championships year after year. In the last two NCAA tournaments held, UConn's been to the final four each time. Fonka Menjiadu driving to her left, missed the shot, and it's rebounded by Dorka Juhaj. You see UConn bringing 
Yu Hajin off the bench, and they're so much longer with those two in. Pass out for Kristen Williams. Good look and a good shot. Great find by Paige Becker. As usually you teach your players, don't leave your feet to pass, but what a beautiful find. Wilson running the offense to start this second quarter. See South Florida really working the clock and reversing the ball a number of times. Blocked away by Olivia Nelson Ododa. And that, that can be eye-opening, I would say, for a South Florida player because you beat the first level of defense and then you get into the lane and you're facing 6'5", six, 6'5". Five, six, five. So it's not something that you're used to. And Olivia Nelson Ododa, a long 6'5", such a springy tall player. Chineka just 5'7". Pinson gets the open mid-range shot. Rebounded by Nelson Ododa. And that's the difference between a top 10 program and a top 20 program. Post players are that much longer, that much more athletic. We've seen a lot of them in this tournament. Hey, it's another one! Yeah, when she's on, the net doesn't move. She doesn't even hit the rim. And that's something that's really important. We talked about the depth of UConn and bringing in scoring off the bench. It's got to be more than their top five players. So it's only a matter of time before AZ Fudd gets comfortable, and we're seeing her just unconscious right now on the offensive end. Alvarez takes a quick shot. It's kept alive by Manunga. It stays with USF. She played it off the UConn player in front of her. But AZ Fudd, look, UConn's got the number one recruit in the country the last couple of years. You have Paige Beckers, and now you have AZ Fudd's coming in behind her. She obviously doesn't have the same expectation on her shoulders as Beckers does. But you've mentioned the lack of depth that UConn at least has used in the first couple of games. Well, I think it's not that they don't have the players. It's just that you have to earn Coach Ariama's trust. And that comes on the defensive end. And what a lot of people don't realize, and, and we see a good defensive set there by UConn. UConn's very young. Yes, they have Kristen Williams, who has a ton of experience and is a senior. Yes, they have you know, a front line of Nelson Adoto, who's also a senior. But other than that, they're freshmen and sophomores. And Freshman and sophomore year is an adjustment. You are playing against grown women. You're not playing against 15-year-old girls anymore in high school. And you have to learn the game at the oh. college level. Fudd again. AZ Fudd is three for three from downtown timeout South Florida. And UConn's dropped nine straight to start the second quarter. And it's such a smart play by Paige Beckers to find her shooter and find the hot hand. AZ Fudd is feeling it. She has already reached a career high in points in her third career game for UConn. 27-14, Paige Beckers is dishing out the assists, and AZ Fudd is finishing them off. We'll be back. Welcome back to Paradise Island in the Bahamas. USF and UConn in the semifinals of this tournament. The Huskies up 27 to 14 and on a 9 nothing run thanks to AZ Fudd. What a beautiful no look pass by Paige Beckers to find Fudd and that's really important for UConn. It was only a matter of time before she got comfortable and got going and give Paige Beckers a lot of credit for finding the hot hand. The Beckers got a couple of buckets in the first quarter but has turned into the facilitator she can be. Bermejo, oh, clattered by Aaliyah Edwards. Yeah, you saw UConn off of that ball screen. Dorka gave a really hard hedge on that ball screen. And Edwards was a little bit late recovering, so led to the foul. Bermejo got a lot of minutes in the opening game. She only has five points this year, but is a stretch big when she gets comfortable. Chineka cuts inside Beckers. What a lovely play. Her pull-up jumper, that mid-range pull-up, is as good as anybody's I've seen so far this year. The sophomore Elena Chineka from Thessaloniki, Greece, winning that battle against Beckers. But Beckers so far been winning the war. That's her first turnover of the season. Great help defense there by South Florida to get in the passing lane. Pinson with the Hezzy is still blocked from behind by guess who? AZ Fudd running the floor. Beckers picks up the hole, oh, not the assist. The layup was missed by Edwards and she commits the foul and oh my. She's so good. She just sees things before they happen and her maturity and ability as a passer, simply as a sophomore, is just 
beautiful to watch. Well, Beckers did commit her first turnover of the year in over 80 minutes of play. So that super fun stat has finally gone away. She almost picked up an assist immediately afterward. Chineka cuts inside Beckers and floats it up over the 6'5", Dorka Yuhaj. And that's something for Paige, just defensively jumping to the ball. She got caught trailing there and gives South Florida credit for making a nice curl off of that cross screen. Chineka with 10 of USF's 18 points. And she's guarding Paige Beckers as well. Dorka Yuhaj to her right hand. Great strong take to the basket. Easy finish. Transfer from Ohio State, two-time first team Big Ten player. Valuable low post presence off the bench. Good patience by Pinzown there. Trying to isolate Chineka. Ten to shoot. Chineka, the mid-range pull up. Oh, it looked good, but came yeah. off the back of the iron. No, it was the right read. She just missed a shot, but that's a good, solid shot for South Florida. Beckers tries to slip up. It's turned over again. Pinson steals it from Beckers the second time. Yeah. Sydney Harvey for three. Great read, not getting beat back door on the back cut by Fudd that time, and Pinson just got a hand on it. Was Had good patience and transition to get a good shot. So Paige Beckers with six assists, two turnovers, and seven points. So far in the game, timeout on the floor, UConn 29, USF 21. Yeah, it looked like Kristen Williams might have tweaked her ankle or something there on that play. I'm not quite sure what happened. I didn't see it. But. So she got tripped up. Sydney Harvey made the three, but Kristen Williams was trying to close out, and then she kind of fell over Sydney Harvey. You but see a pull up here by Chineke. Great finish, nice, easy shot. Great penetration, finding the shooter. Well, Sydney Harvey certainly has to get going. You feel Chineka probably can't do it all by herself if they're going to hang around with UConn. No, they can't. And they have the one-two punch with those two guards. Between Harvey, with Sydney Harvey and Chineke, their backcourt, they can score. It's getting some depth and getting some scoring from their front court that's going to be important for them. That's what hasn't been present so far. Betty Manunga with just two points, two rebounds halfway through the second quarter. She had 18 points, 12 boards in the opener. Defeated inside. Great inside out pass. Williams, the open three. And if you're South Florida, you'll take that. Like, yes, she got the three off, but it was contested. Blocking foul on Williams. Chineka was pushing the pace. I think that was a good try by Williams, but she wasn't squared up and centered to her. If we can get another look at it, just in transition, the little sidestep by Shineke, she just didn't take it squarely, but a good try. Elena Shineke, nine for nine at the free throw line in this game. You might have just changed well, her. That's actually on the season, so we'll see if that changes things. Nope. All right, so far, <laughs> 10 for 10 now on the year. Their shooting percentages overall are just really fantastic. Shoots 42% from the field. Hit a couple of threes in this game. And there it is. She misses her first free throw of the year, now 10 for 11. But she continues to collect points like it's her job because it is. She has 11. That leads all scorers. Trying to go into Williams. It's bouncing around Manunga. How'd this ball stay in? It did. And it ends up with South Florida. South Florida did a great job defensively and then just gave the ball back to UConn there. Westbrook trying to return the favor, pushing the pace. What a lovely floater. Number one rule in transition, stop the basketball. Which is really it. hard to do with UConn. Uh, it, <laughs> like. Westbrook just saw the green light in the head. Transfer from Tennessee, now Chineka. Another different look by South Florida with that elevator screen. There's an offensive foul before the shot. It's called on Kristen Williams, which will be her second. The shot went in from AZ Fudd, too, to add insult to injury. And you see Harvey taking another charge. And boy, did they need that, because that would have been four for four from AZ Fudd. So. Just a great job of getting her feet set outside of the circle. Kristen Williams tried to hold up, but she couldn't. 
And Williams going to have to be on the bench until the second half. Coach Oriem is giving her an earful. Sydney Harvey, one of the three, shut down by Fudd. Well, she made the right play there. Just really good defensive effort by South Florida. Penson, Manunga, she can make these. Not on this occasion. We also see Nika Mule in the game for the first time for UConn. Hits the back screen, trying to get it out to Yuhaj, but the active hands of USF in the way. UConn did such a good job yesterday against Minnesota of exposing those backdoor cuts. You see a really concerted effort by South Florida's help side defense to take those layups away. With UConn, you have to pick your poison because you need to be out on the catch contesting three-point shots. They're all so good at catching, ready to shoot, and knocking down threes. So if you're trying to run them off the three-point line, then you're going to potentially give something up. If you give up a backdoor cut, you have to depend on great team help defense to be there to, get, to stop those layups. It's been there at certain times, but UConn has still just been able to score comfortably on most occasions. Beckers back into the game, Ducharne into the game for the first time, and a foul on Harvey as she went to the ground and tripped Beckers. I give South, South Florida a lot of credit. They're down nine, and I think their defense, they're communicating really well, and they're really, really gritty helping each other out and taking away UConn's first and second looks. UConn is winning this game right now on the defensive end. Again, you see the help defense coming over. Beckers out to Ducharme, couldn't handle the pass, and now her second attempt to get rid of the ball is deflected. You got seven to shoot. Nelson Adota, Westbrook's going to have to let it fly from the parking lot, and she missed. Foul on the floor. Manunga's hurt. Something happened on that last play. She's trying to fight it off on the far side of the floor. The foul has gone against USF in the battle for the rebound. And Manunga's come out. Leverett and Bermejo have come in for USF. Alvarez as well now with the late arrival. See them working on her knee. Hope she's okay. Yeah, boy, yeah. one of the biggest contributors from day one of this tournament. You hope she'll be able to put on another show like that. Beckers. Nelson Ododa. She looked like she got fouled there. Five to shoot for UConn. Westbrook. Becker's got to let it go. She got it off, and it's off to the right. Rebounded by Mule, but they're going to call shot clock violation. It didn't touch the rim. Zeeland, I'm telling you, the defense we're seeing from South Florida is so intense, so they communicate so well, and they're really forcing UConn deep in the shot clock, which is something that UConn hasn't really faced so far this year. Uh, UConn averages over 91 points a game at 31 with 245 left in the first half, but UConn's defense has been good enough that the Huskies are up nine regardless. Yeah, well, some of those are self-inflicted wounds by South Florida, but. Ten on the shot clock now for Pinson. Pinson, the step back three. Oh, what a shot by Elisa Pinson. Yeah, just really getting Paige Beckers off balance and being able to step back and pull so quickly. They've given it a two, so it's 31-24. That's a lot of confidence for somebody that didn't score in the opening game, Mule. Might have gotten away with the travel there. We just see a battle inside. South Florida isn't giving up any oh. inches to UConn's bigs. They are really being physical with them and getting them off the block. And then we're seeing double teams coming. Once they get them off the block, we're seeing double teams from South Florida's weak side on the post player. So a foul there, and you see a little frustration from South Florida, but. Beckers hits it. What their, an inbound. Their agenda is right on. Uh, South Florida is certainly competing, but UConn still has players that can just pop up and do that. The battle between Olivia Nelson Odota and Shea Leverett of USF on the post has been spectacular the last couple of Husky possessions. It's fun to watch. Harvey off the screen. Tough shot. It's the right shot, but it's a tough shot. Westbrook, the red shirt senior. She found one bucket in transition earlier. AZ Fudd. Beckers 
Nelson Odota long two, missed the shot. Bermejo tips it around. Eventually Alvarez grabs it. And if you're South Florida, you'll live with that. You took you took away Paige's cut to the basket. You helped off a little bit. You you don't you kind of have to pick your poison, like we said earlier. You can live with UConn's post players taking a 17-foot shot. And Nelson Odota only taking 12 shots from the field over the course of the whole season. Seven on the shot clock for Pinson. And she's lost the dribble and turned it over to Charm. FUD. Bermejo kept her feet on the ground, and UConn will slow it down inside a minute. Feet inside, taken by Leverett. Wins the battle this time against Nelson Odota. But Sidney Harvey taking a while to get up the floor. Coach R.M. is frustrated with that. Just, it's a freshman mistake. She's look, she saw the post player, and she missed her, and then forced the pass in, which led to a South Florida turnover. Bigs have to understand and guards have to understand if you don't hit them right away, it's not the end of the world. And then we see another freshman mistake by UConn. They just put South Florida at the free throw line. That's, That's their 15th foul. Caroline Ducharme is the number five recruit in all the 2021 class, but she got a hold of Alvarez, and Alvarez is going to be going to the free throw line with 21 seconds left. But these are execution issues. These are end-of-game situations that in your third game of the year as a freshman or as a sophomore, you know, for the two freshmen, Ducharme and AZ Fudd, they have on the floor, they're learning in the fire. They're not learning in a practice setting with those end-of-game situations. So now if you're UConn, you want to make sure you secure the last shot. 20 seconds to go. Make sure you don't give South Florida another possession. And Avina Westbrook is the experience on the ball to try and deliver that. But we've got a foul that's been called that's going to send Olivia Nelson Odota to the free throw line. Well, the refs are keeping an eye on that, that post battle. And South Florida is just taking a stand, and they're saying, Get UConn's post players off the block. If you're a post player for South Florida, you have to do everything you can to get Nelson Adoto a foot off the block. That way, it's easier and quicker to double team and everybody else can rotate. And that is Nelson Odota's first missed free throw of the season. She's now three for four. Well, now if you're South Florida, you've got to make sure you get this rebound if she misses again. Nothing but net. Splits the pair. 16 seconds to get a shot off for USF. UConn up nine as the first half comes to a close. Chineca. Leading scorer, Chineca, not on the floor. Garairo. Just three seconds to shoot for Garairo. This is not where USF wants to be. Pinson chucks it from half court. Wasn't all too far away, but UConn's defense has just been spectacular. Well, and I think you had a player there that was in a little bit of an uncomfortable situation. Pinson might have kept the ball and, and been able to do something more with it. The Huskies are doing what they do. Up nine as we head into halftime of the opening game, day two at the Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis from Paradise Island. I'm with Coach Ariama, Coach AZ Fudd off the bench, three for three from beyond the arc. Is that encouraging for you? Yeah, we needed her to start coming out, you know, with that kind of mindset. Uh, you know, she's been really tentative uh, the, the first couple of games, and I thought she got tentative the second time she came out, you know. Uh, you know, I wish when I, I couldn't shoot, but I wish when I was playing, my coach would have told me, every time you touch it, I want you to shoot it, right? I mean, these are pretty easy, easy instructions. So uh, hopefully in the second half, we can get her come back out aggressive. South Florida's defense has been gritty. What do you, what's your message to your team coming back in the second? Yeah, you know, we've played these guys a lot, a lot of years, and uh, uh, that's what they do, you know. Uh, and I thought our defense was, how many points they got? They had 25 points. So I thought our defense was really, really good. And, you know, you got to take advantage of the opportunities that you get. You got to make some outside shots because you're not going to get much inside against them. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, the whistle's been blown, and we can throw the ball in whenever we so please. South Florida and UConn, game one of four. This one's in the winner's bracket, though. The winner of this one will be playing for that battle for Atlantis title tomorrow. And if you're Coach Jose Fernandez, you – withstood the first half, but you didn't just come here to make the game close. You came here for an upset, so it'll be interesting to see how they start off the second half. 
Well, he started out on defense as Paige Beckers and the Yukon Huskies. Trying to add to a nine-point lead. They've made significant runs to start each of the first two quarters, but Beckers misses the three. It's good to see Manunga back on the court, and she collected that defensive rebound to get South Florida the ball back. Well, even though she's six feet tall, she is such a force on the glass with her strength. Pinson already has one, and now she has two. You knew that was good when it left her hand. She just caught the ball in great rhythm and had a nice release on it. Good start for the Bulls. And Psalm, eight points in this game after a goose egg in the opener. It's the second time we've seen the jumper for Olivia Nelson Odota, but this time it's money. And South Florida giving her space there, just trying to keep her in front. I, I think you just live with that. There's certain things you have to live with. You can't take away everything. And Nelson Odota stepping outside. It's just so hard to defend given the way she's battled inside already. Pinson. Harvey. A wild drive into traffic. Beckers and Williams tied her up, but it stays with the Bulls. Nine to shoot. Good read and help defense by Paige Beckers there. Harvey will inbound. Quick play to get her a three from the corner. Missed it, but Manunga's there. Both teams like that handoff play. What a save by Pinson. The only way USF could keep the ball instead of resigning to her fate, she just throws it backwards and it works. Really good hustle there. Chineka, Monunga, able to be patient and find the basket. Good pump fake and finish with her left hand. She really didn't have any other options, but really focused, good finish. We, we, we expected to see them come with something different to be able to get the ball inside to their bigs, and she answered the call there. Wow, Williams misses by a country mile, and it's 36-30. But Williams steals the ball. She stepped out trying to keep it alive, frustrated with herself, almost an immediate redemption story. That just so, so shows so much maturity as a senior. Okay, you didn't take the greatest shot. You didn't get the best result, but make up for it and make a play. And just a really heads-up play by her trying to get in the passing lane there. Uh, Kristen Williams certainly cooled off from yesterday where she went 12 from 14. On her field goal attempts, dropped 31 points. She's 2 for 6 today. Pinson. Chineka. Gets to her favorite spot and converts, and it's USF that's going on a run to start this third quarter. Yeah, she utilized the fact that she had a big on her to try to get her off balance and get to her pull-up. Great job there. The Tramp Beckers in the corner. Kristen Williams. Oh, that's brilliant, but she missed the shot. Bounces off Leverett and stays with UConn. An 8 nothing run to start the third quarter for USF. Slip pass, inside out, Westbrook. The shooting for UConn's been really, really poor out of the half. Chineka trying to go right into Beckers, and it is a jump ball. Stays yeah. with USF. That's the right call. You know, UConn's missed badly on a couple of those three-point attempts, but they're getting good looks. Anytime you can be squared up and catch the ball in shooting rhythm and get an open look, those are good looks. Coach Jose Fernandez has done such a good job getting his team ready out of the half and another bucket on another set play. Danny, it's just what he does as a coach. Great screen on the backside. So we'll see how they answer. The answer is an open three for Fudd, and goodness, she hasn't touched the rim yet. And it was a beautiful screen and cut, beautiful screen by Dorka Juhas and a great cut and read by AZ Fudd to get herself a wide open look, and now she's four for four from the three. See Paige, bodies flying. Yes, <laughs> Lots of screening happening. Paige Becker's colliding, and Manunga's now working in the post. Gets it inside out, Chineka, another mid-range jumper, and oh, in and out, rebounded by Shea Leverett, and then rebounded by Chineka. Look at the Bulls. They are fighting. 
tooth and nail. They are scrapping and clawing for every possession they can get. Eight on the shot clock for Pinson. Aliza Pinson finds Harvey with two to shoot. What defense from Beckers? Harvey was looking for the foul call on that. AZ Fudd slows things down as UConn has found itself in a ball game now, which is what you want from this type of tournament early in the season. You want to feel that competition. Well, as a fan, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I just think these two teams are playing so hard and putting on a great show for the people that are here in the Bahamas. Paige Beckers! Great offensive rebound by Dorka Uhaj and Beckers makes it count. It's so... When you can get an offensive rebound and kick out to a wide-open three-point shooter, the offensive shooter has her feet set and she's already squared to the basket. That's an easy shot. That's an easy shot for Paige Beckers to make. And a timeout called by USF. Now the timeout's going back and forth. From the field in general, we've just seen we've seen better shooting, but USF is still struggling to get baskets inside, even though Manunga has heated up. She's got four points in the third quarter. Yeah, she's done a nice job of creating some angles for herself around the basket, which is a tough task against this UConn front line. So we'll see what Coach Fernandez drew up in the huddle. I feel like this is an important possession where you've really got to get a high percentage shot. And they did. They got a good look for Harvey with a nice pump fake and step through, but just wasn't able to capitalize on it. You see UConn going to, going to FUD again here. Williams traveled. She made a great read, though. The defense was trailing off of that screen, and she made a nice curl to the basket, just didn't quite get her feet set. And so, on, so off on the floor general for USF. Methodical in her approach to the UConn defense this time. Well, she's taking her time. I think that if you and value your possessions and take as much time off as you can. Manunga missed it, but Shea Leverett gets the rebound over Yuhaj. Pinson with the three, and Yuhaj able to squeeze it this time. Well, that's just the difference. The difference is UConn knocked those threes down, and South Florida just missed them. So you're in an eight-point deficit right now. You've already gotten a stop. You need to really dig in if you're South Florida and find a way to get another stop. Yuhaj with six rebounds off the bench now to lead UConn. Williams gets trapped in the corner. Williams turns it over. South Florida does a really nice job of icing ball screens, and in that situation, when UConn went baseline, they just stayed in the trap and forced a turnover. Great defensive stand by South Florida. USF not really even getting into its set until 15 on the shot clock, trying to take the air out of the ball for UConn. Well, the more time they have the basketball in their hands, the less time UConn has to score. Harvey back for Pinson. Might have to put the ball up again. One to shoot, and that's another shot clock violation for South Florida. It's a, it's a double-edged sword because that can happen a lot more too. Yeah, but I think you live with that. You know, you got a decent look. You just wasn't able to execute it. And a little confusion here by UConn on who's running the point. Ends up being AZ Fudd. Beckers is waiting all the way down in the corner. Obviously, it's normally her job. Well, I think Coach Ariyama just switched up who was where on that set because they ran the same thing the last three times down the court. AZ Fudd's hot start is petered out. She's missed her last two threes, but Coach Ariyama said, look, you shoot it every time you get it. Chineka. Looks like she was bumped flying through the lane. And we tried to go to Danny earlier with a with a tidbit about Coach Fernandez. I believe we've got we've got, the, we've got Danny now. Danny, what do you have for us? Yeah, I had him quickly right before we came into the second half, and he said that 9-0 run at the end of the first hurt hurt the team, but they need to be better at their baseline defense. But he said they're right there. They're right there in this game. And they are still right there because their their inbounding offense has been great. It's produced a couple of buckets. Yeah, they've gotten some nice looks off of that handoff. You see UConn going back to their Princeton-type motion offense. 
Beckers puts up the three. Just a bit left. If you go under handoffs, that's an automatic for Paige to get a good look. And while she's been good, she hasn't been at her absolute best from downtown. Just two for seven. Mununga for three. Great confidence. Mununga's missed a couple of those outside shots, but she just caught it in rhythm and really giving her team a spark and giving them another score. She's now two for 11 from three all year. But you could see the whole bench when she caught it say, let that ball go at 42-39. USF's responded to UConn's run. Dorka Uhaj lost the ball. Cheneka overran it. Who's going to get there? It's Cheneka. She goes right into Beckers. What a take. Oh, Elena Cheneka. Great strong take to the basket. South Florida is right back in this game, only down one. 17 for Cheneka to lead all scorers. Beckers lobs it too far. Her third turnover of the game after nine in her first two contests. So it's the right idea with a rolling Nelson Adoto to the basket. What happened there, the secondary help defense came off of the backside shooter. So in that exchange on the ball screen, with the big rolling to the basket, you saw two South Florida defenders taking that away. The shooter is open right behind her. It'll be interesting to see if they run that again. Pinsome. A modest five assists for her, given her normal standard. Cheneka. She just traveled. Edwards putting on all the pressure, but Manunga attacks the closeout and finds her fourth bucket. Well, she went right at AZ Fudd, and that's... That's looking to attack a freshman in that situation. Smart play by South Florida, and they've gotten the lead. That's the first USF lead of the game. UConn jumped out to a 6-0 advantage, and USF never closed it, even in the first quarter. Edwards. It's a lovely move, but the shot's not going down for the Huskies. Good take by Edwards and smart play by UConn to try to get to the basket there. Just wasn't able to finish the play. 19-second difference between shot clock and game clock. They get it to Elena Cheneka. Cheneka to her left. Just missed it. Rebounded by Manunga. Misses the stick pack, and it's Shea Leverett that has it. Great fight by South Florida. Staying on the glass. UConn holding for the last shot of this quarter. Down three. A Change of events, monster. huh? 20 to 8 third quarter for USF. Paige Becker's trying to get to the basket is fouled. It's just the second foul of the quarter for either team. So it should be on the floor with seven seconds left. Well, 6.9. Paige Becker's, you figure, be the target. She has the ball against Pinson. Three. Becker's. Oh, what a shot by Paige Beckers. That's ridiculous. I mean, if you're South Florida, you did everything to get back in this game and have a three-point lead. And to see that shot just fade away in front of the bench, that's ridiculous. Hey, when the lights are on, who better than the player of the year as a freshman last year to take the big shot to tie it going to the fourth? I mean, my goodness, you try this in your driveway and you're missing 99 out of 100. We'll see you for the fourth quarter. Paige Beckers might not have had her best tournament, but she is certainly still the player to go to for UConn. Danny? Talk about Paige Beckers with Coach Ariema coming into this tournament. He said she has incredible talent. She has distractions that don't seem so distracting to her. The expectations don't seem so overwhelming. She has the right temperament. And no matter how they play, the ball always seems to find Paige. Westbrook looking to drive. It ends up with AZ Fudd. And AZ Fudd hits the three. And out of that quarter, we saw UConn read the the ball screen roller and find the shooter behind it. AZ Fudd with a wide open look. See a change of defense here by UConn going zone. Manunga. Pinson from serious range. She's missed it. The rebound falls for Fudd. Now USF did work against the zone against Syracuse 
in the opening game of this tournament. That might be an advantage. Perhaps, but I think it was just a oh, simple, Beckers. just a switch maybe out of their uh, out of the quarter timeout to try to give South Florida a different look and get them out of rhythm. We see it again here on a make. UConn, eight straight points after USF took its biggest lead of three. Nearly turned over by Chineka. Came back to her. Pinson trying to get into the middle. Chineka. Long two. She missed it. Great box out by Page on the backside. That's one thing when you go zone. If you don't box out out of it, South Florida's going to expose that. A big game for AZ Fudd. 15 points. Beckers has 17, and she is able to avoid disaster. A little bit of... Two, mi two miscues right there. Tend to shoot. Beckers will just take it herself. Missed it. Nelson Odota battling for the rebound, and that keeps it with UConn. A little bit out of sync by UConn on some of those handoffs. Not like them. Well, when you score 91 and a half points a game, and now all of a sudden you've got you know, seven minutes or eight minutes and two seconds left, our clock's still running there on the score bug. It can throw you off. They're having to work harder for, for points than they've had to in the first two games. Definitely. Oh, FUD, open again. <laughs> I thought that was oh. going down again. And so did everybody <laughs> in a UConn shirt in this building. You will not see her miss a lot of shots that are that open, the number one recruit in the class this year. And so we see UConn back in a man-to-man -man defense, player-to-player -player matchup. Alvarez. Given some space, she might take that later. She's roaming around. Offensive foul. I think they got Manunga for a screen. Yeah, not quite sure what happened there. Nelson Adoto switched on to the ball, and I think Alvarez was trying to find a player, and Manunga just got in the way. It's the second on Betty Manunga. But those are two possessions that every possession matters against UConn. You have to at least get a shot up. Those those turnovers will come back to bite you now that you're in the fourth quarter. Beckers from the corner. Oh, a couple of missed chances for UConn to really pull away. Yeah, but they're getting the right shots that they want, and they're getting the ball to the player that can make those plays. Uh, Fudd and Beckers, the two top scorers, both missing open threes, so USF hanging around 50-45. Alvarez can make these, nearly did. Fine grabs the rebound. Alvarez, Co AAC, sixth player of the year. And Manunga's shaken up again. UConn has, it, has an advantage. Beckers turns down the shot for an even better shot. Westbrook in the corner, misses. That's three straight, missed by UConn. South Florida has to capitalize on these missed opportunities by UConn. As you can bet, the Huskies aren't going to keep missing these types of shots. Typically, no. <laughs> but we didn't bet on South Florida scoring 20 points to UConn's 11 in the third quarter, so. That's why you got to love sports. Alvarez foul. A lot more ball handling for Maria Alvarez in the second half. Normally, it'll be Pinson or Wilson to have the ball almost exclusively for that man's team, Coach Fernandez. Yeah, Alvarez is looking to create for her teammates a little bit. Maybe it's matches, ma matchups, who's guarding who. I mean, with Coach Fernandez, nothing happens by accident. There's a purpose for every set they run and what they're looking for. Dulce Fanka Mingiadu's checked in. She was seventh in the AAC in points per game at Memphis before transferring. She's yet to find her stride with USF. That's something the staff talks about. It'll be a heck of a time to find her stride now. Pinson. Trying to get through Williams, stays in bounds. There's seven to shoot. Oh, what a pass from Alvarez. I was just going to say, they've got to get the court reverse somehow, but they just kept driving baseline there and were able to get the post player to help up for an easy shot for their post player. It's Dulce Fancomengiadu, her first bucket of the game. And we're back to UConn's continuity. Fudd has lost the handle. It's on the floor for Alvarez. Penson drifting through. Dulce Fancomingiato sent back. Chineka 
Driving in, Shineka. Oh, that was a shot she can make. Yeah, left-handed layup going to the basket. Just smart play by her taking what the defense gave her. Williams for three. That's a senior. That's a senior. We've seen UConn miss a number of threes, but that's a senior with maturity calming her team and knocking down a big shot. Kristen Williams. And UConn's back in this 2-3, so it looks like on makes they're going to a 2-3 zone and on misses they're player to player. Excellent adjustment. USF's really struggled against the zone. Bermejo, Alvarez. It's coming up way short for Alvarez. Westbrook in her face. So the difference between yesterday in Syracuse's zone and UConn's zone today is the activity of the center, Nelson Adoto, to be able to help and cover the high post. That alleviates a lot of pressure for those two guards up top, and they've been clogging the post and making it tough for South Florida to get the ball where they want it to go. Well, Alvarez found herself involved in a lot of the play, and USF hanging around, but UConn is just making enough plays to keep itself in front. What a ball game we've been treated to. Did you necessarily see this coming? Le yesterday, you're just focused on what you need to get done today. Fudd. The net did not even move for AZ Fudd. When she's rolling like that, she's proving why she's the number one recruit in the country, and her teammate is doing a really nice job of finding her. Six for nine from the field, six for nine from three. Coach Oriema, she better keep shooting. Sydney Harvey, missed by a mile, but Mununga again on the offensive glass. Great hustle by Paige to affect that shot, Paige Beckers, but even better effort by South Florida on the weak side glass. Manunga, not just a great rebounder, but a great offensive rebounder. She had 15 offensive boards in her first four games. Offensive foul, and guess who drew it? That's three. Yeah. That's three charges that she's drawn today. Sydney three possessions. Harvey. My, I mean, it's, a, it's an art form. It really is. She just has a great knack for keeping her hands back and taking the charge right in the chest. It's the second one off Williams. Well, South Florida down seven to UConn. The Huskies have found themselves in a battle in the second half. USF's actually outscored UConn since halftime. Harvey got the look that they would have wanted, but she missed it. And again, USF gets the offensive rebound. They've done a great job against zones on the offensive glass and giving themselves second and third opportunities. You believe you, would you believe me if I told you that USF has out-rebounded UConn 32-27? Mununga, stripped by Beckers, and that might have gone off Mununga too. That was excellent quick hands. That was an interesting possession because UConn started off in a zone and off the offensive rebound they went man-to-man. -man. So with three seconds left on the shot clock, it would be interesting to see what South Florida cooks up. Basically need a catch and shoot. They go to Mununga off one of their inbound plays. I don't think she hit the rim. Doesn't matter. It'll go to UConn either way. They did reset the shot clock, though. That's the second time that they've gotten a backside layup off of a baseline out-of-bounds play, so that's something to watch moving forward. One more big basket for UConn, and it'll be a very long way back for South Florida. The Huskies have battled their way through, and in a way that they haven't had to do this season, it feels like UConn has given themselves a winning chance on defense. Yeah, and Coach Ariema looking for something specific here. Paige off of the ball screen, just able to turn oh. the corner and get to the basket. There's not much you can do about that. Paige Beckers, 19 points, leads all scores. All that to go with seven assists. And we're back to the zone. UConn's back to his zone. The zone sometimes get a bad rap. Harvey. Just missed a couple of threes down the stretch that could have flipped the script, but they've not been easy shots. UConn's forced USF. Well, they're forcing him further and further away from the basket, and it's because South Florida isn't able to get the ball inside his zone and then kick out for shooters with their feet set. UConn will take it all the way down as we get inside two minutes. Beckers looking for AZ Fudd the whole time. Fudd uses the drive, misses the shot. Leverett the rebound. 
Good read by Fudd. I mean, obviously South Florida is going to be as close as humanly possible to her when she catches the ball at this point, but good job by her getting into the lane. Almost a turnover there by South Florida. Pinson, brilliant work to Shea Leverett, and USF stays alive down seven. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Just a miscommunication by UConn. Coach R.E.M. is not sure either. No, he's just shrugging that one off. Can't believe that Leverett got such an easy bucket. It was the second basket for Shea Leverett. I would expect to see a high ball screen here for Paige. They've run that the last two times. Six to shoot, now five. Beckers, baseline. It's so subtle, but just that half pivot by Nelson Adoto got the South Florida defender off of Paige and created that layup. Paige Beckers, 21 points, 8 for 15 from the field, and she's led UConn to a nine-point lead with a minute to go in the fourth. Allie? Just we see this the handoff action and UConn being able to get a wide open three off of the Nelson Adota handoff. And again, Paige Becker's getting to the basket for an easy layup. She's just so darn hard to stop. Just a minute to go in the Bahamas. We've been treated to an excellent opening basketball game in day two of the Bad Boy Movers battle for Atlantis. It's UConn 60, the number two team in the country, has been tested by number 23 USF, but it looks like the Huskies are going to be able to hold on. And it has been in large part due to Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd, the two number one recruits from the last two seasons. Well, Paige Beckers doing it all. Seven assists to go with her 21 points. The other stat that's interesting Nelson Adoto has seven assists. We see one here to Paige Becker's great read. And on the inbound that we that just happened, Paige Becker's got the steal. And USF is forced to commit the foul, so USF desperately needed a bucket, preferably a three, but turns it over on the inbound. Becker's just trying to pad that stat line even more, able to go out and grab herself a steal and now it will just be academic some free throws coming as well usf's going to need to commit two more fouls big to put time, us in the bonus big time players show up in big time moments and that's what we're seeing from Paige beckers her and williams hitting some important shots the experience even though becker's just a sophomore she feels like one of the cool heads on the floor even did last year as a freshman her and williams Westbrook in the first half. Oh, my. Chineka really determined to get through Nelson Odota. But you mentioned those seven assists for Nelson Odota. That's a play they've gone to in crunch time. Well, it's an action, I would say. You know, UConn doesn't necessarily run plays. They all know how to play. And that handoff action between a point guard and a five is really tough to defend when it's Nelson Odota who can see over whoever's guarding her. Uh, USF, we need to commit one more foul to go into the bonus. Looks like we might just play this out. Paige Beckers for three. She's missed it. Pinson grabs the rebound. It's quite the effort, though, for the USF Bulls. What would you make of their performance if and a losing effort? If today. you're South Florida, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. You came out toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number two team in the country, made some threes early. Second half came along. You had a third quarter where you outscored them 20-11. I think going into the locker room after this game, you've got to be proud of your effort. Monunga stepping back, hits the J. And it's a long two. They'll bring this game to a close, 60 to 53. Well, UConn averages 91 a game, only puts up 60 points, but holds the USF Bulls to 53 after USF drops 77 in the opening game. Well, South Florida just had a fantastic game plan. These two head coaches, Jose Fernandez and Gino Ariema, are great friends and they know each other really well. So you see them greeting each other after the game. But just a really solid game plan by South Florida. And I think you've got to walk away with this from with some confidence. Your players executed what you asked them to do. you got nothing to be ashamed of. And then you look at UConn. They'll be headed to the final tomorrow and they'll be playing either ninth-ranked Oregon or first-ranked South Carolina. How does this game project them forward to that final? Both of Oregon and South Carolina have very large front lines. I think the guard play from UConn is going to be important. What we saw tonight was Kristen Williams knocking down a three when it really, really mattered, and Paige Becker's finishing the job and taking them home. 
Uh, we do have Danny, the third member of our crew. She is trying to get a hold of Coach Gino Oriema to ask him about his team's performance and the win so far. Uh, it looks like Danny might have a hold of Coach now, just over there on the side of the court. Uh, Danny, how does Coach feel about his team's performance? Coach Gino Ariama, Coach, you just told me this has been the best part of your day so far. Why? Because the game's finally over. <laughs> you know, uh, every time we played these guys for, you know, it must have been 20, 25 times in four years, you know, or, or eight years rather, and it's always the same. They grind it out. They run their stuff. They're so disciplined. They're so well coached. Uh, their kids all buy in, and they scream for each other, and, and defensively, they don't give you anything inside. You have to make jump shots against them. And um, and I thought that was a really gutty win for us. You know, we uh, you know we could have easily like you know kind of felt sorry for ourselves, but uh, uh, we made some big shots when we had to. Um, I hope this was AZ's kind of coming out party, you know, and uh, hopefully we can go from there. Yeah, can we spotlight AZ for a second? Six from nine. Bench, and you've been talking all weekend about finding out who else can help your offense, who else is going to be there off the bench. I asked you if this was encouraging going into the half. What is it now seeing what she did in the second half? Well, sometimes too much emphasis is placed on, you know, who starts and who doesn't. And uh, I feel like we have six players, maybe seven, you know, if you count Dorka in there, that probably could be starters easily. And I would be okay with it. But you know, I think having somebody like AZ right now, for this moment, I'm not saying it's going to last forever. Coming off the bench is just a, a, a weapon that not very many people have. Um, so I hope today was the day. I hope today was the day that gets her, you know, act, feeling like, hey, I, I'm in college. I belong. I'm really good. Coach told me to shoot it every time I touch it. So maybe, maybe she'll be the one kid on my team that listens. Lastly, for you, Coach, I did listen when you said that these turn. It's important. Exactly what you were talking about, what we saw, your battle with South Florida. Absolutely. And, you know, years ago, years ago um, a game like this may have been, you know, a 30-point game because the gap between, you know, the top five teams and the rest of the country was, you know, way wide. Now, you know, you go into a game with a top 20 team. I don't care who it is. Put yourself in that situation, and regardless of who we play tomorrow night, whether it's you know South Carolina or Oregon, you got a great, great, great game here even before Thanksgiving. So I think the more of those games, win or lose, I mean you can't put yourself above the game. You can't say, well, I only want to schedule games where I win. You know, you got to put yourself in these situations, and everybody benefits. The fans benefit, the teams benefit, and I just think it's great. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. Zealand, back to you.